We could get a sharp rally, says Eric, as much as 8 to 10 percent. Yeah, well, he's, he's done a great job. And I think just to add some more data points to what Eric's saying, where I agree, is if you look at the NASDAQ first technically, on Friday, only 17 percent of stocks in the NASDAQ 100 were above their 200-day moving average. Going back to 2009, that's only happened six times. So to me, that's like peak bearish, peak technicals from a trading perspective. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if what Eric is saying is true. And you saw today, especially towards the close, the disruptive names, certain names in the queues just did great today, especially like a Coinbase, Microsoft, et cetera. I'll say on the S&P, though, technically, right now we really haven't hit that we're, third, we're, we're less than 30 percent of stocks are, are below their 200-day moving average. Once we hit that also, that's also a really strong buy signal. So, so I agree yep. with Eric and, and with our clients that we have dollar cost averaging. We actually pulled forward some of that and did it today because I do think this year is going to be a good year of accumulation because I do think we're going to have a tough time with the Fed and the market's going to stay in this funk. But as a trader, this is definitely seems like a good technical entry point. Yeah. Dan, agree or disagree with this call? Because you talk about peak in your note as well, hawkishness from the Fed. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot to like in the in the analysis. And, and you can layer on top of it again, the, the Fed meeting. And um, obviously, we'll get some additional data on, on what they're thinking about, about the risk asset sell off and, and the potential for 75 basis points. But along with the CPI print next week, you, you are in that sense hitting the highs. At least that's what we hope for for worry and going forward, you, you, you know, the, the belief or the hope, if you will, is that some of the hawkishness starts to come out of the market and that allows for a little bit of a, of a rally from these levels. That's fair. What about, you know, the call from Guggenheim? And that's not necessarily a call, but the commentary from Scott Minard says the Fed better stay the course, right? You, you were talking a little while ago about, well, maybe it'll have a more dovish tone than, than people think. His point today was they better stay the course or they're going to lose whatever credibility they have left. And most of it went out the door with the whole transitory debate. So I think they'll stay the course in the terms of hiking 50 bips, reducing the balance sheet starting June 1st by 95 by 95 billion. But I think that there are some people who are thinking that they're going to raise by 75 bips next meeting. And my thought is they'll probably take, in not so many words, that off the table because they don't want they want a orderly tightening of financial conditions. They want the S&P 500 to go lower as it has. Mm -hmm. but they don't want it to gap lower to 3,800 or 3,700 or have a 10 year gap to three and a half, three and three quarters percent. So they're trying to sort of tie it a very fine, fine line. And at this point, they don't want the conditions that the market is pricing in to get any tighter, I think, right now at this moment. Maybe they yeah, give one last. If I, last. If I, so, if yeah, I could ahead, just jump yeah, in for ahead. a second, Scott. Yeah, like, please do. I, I think there's a, there's a lot to like about what, what Eric's talking about, but I also think that what, what he's articulating is a view, and I don't, I don't know that this is like sort of a core belief of Eric's, but like th this idea that somehow the Fed is totally capable of perfectly fine-tuning financial conditions to a degree just enough to raise the unemployment X and lower inflation by Y. And again, I'm not saying that Eric is but there is this view that, oh, yeah, they can do this. But to your point earlier, history is replete with instances in which they have not been able to. And so from, from a trading standpoint, and this is not what we do at all, but um, to the extent that you want to be tactically bullish or whatever and, and have uh, some sort of an allocation here for, for assets to bounce, you do have to remember that in the background, these guys are going to torch. Um, I, hold on, let me, let me get a little calmer here. Uh, what they're going to do is basically <laughs> uh, they haven't done it in 30 years, and the idea that they're going to do it perfectly is one with which I would of disagree. Of course. Right.